With the coronavirus still uncontrolled, a mask mandate in all public spaces, and school reopenings right around the corner, there are still a lot of unanswered questions. And that's for both adults and for children. But how do you answer your child's question while lowering their anxiety and keeping them safe? I spoke with a child therapist who says it's a delicate dance and it's different for every child, even for kids in the same house. Former Birmingham Groves High School teacher Dana Leishner has her hands full. I have five kids, um, five months, two years old, four, um, seven, and eight. Dana's husband, John, is an ER doctor, so the coronavirus is a reality in their home. Still, talking to her children about back to school and the coronavirus is different for every child. Dana says it's not just a matter of age. You know, I have one that's definitely more sensitive, um, so our conversations, when we do have them, we sometimes might try and have them separately. Child and adolescent therapist Dr. Jason Van Ness says by tailoring conversations to each child's personality, you can help them stay healthy physically and emotionally, and you already have a guide. Think about these type of sensitive conversations in the same light and depth as if you were um, talking about the birds and bees with your kid. So a fifth grader doesn't need the same detail as a 10th grader. And the guide works all the way down to the youngest curious kids. And for those little ones who don't respond well to direct conversations, Dr. Van Ness says use your child's tendency to listen to adult conversations to ease their anxiety. He calls it peaky ears. By having intentional conversations with another adult, while the child is within earshot. So he might ask his wife, Rebecca, how she's feeling about kids going back to school. And my wife would give a very intentional response and say, Jason, I think the schools are making smart decisions. They've set up parameters that will keep children safe. This avoids sitting little ones down for what can feel like a big talk. And Dr. Van Ness says, watch your child for signs of anxiety, agitation, or irritability. They may not have the language to express how they're feeling. He shows us a bedtime story that can help children process those big emotions. I can do hard things. And this is a, a great multiculturally diverse book that talks about empowering and enable the kid to work through fears and anxieties that they're struggling with. As for Dana Leishner's kids, even the little ones are putting feelings into action. My four-year-old uh, was going to go in the car yesterday, not even in a store, but before he left to go in the car along the ride, he said, I need my mask. Where's my mask? Now, if your child seems to be struggling for a day or two and adjusting, that's absolutely normal. Even for a little more than that, up to a week, still just fine. But if it stretches out for a couple of weeks, it might signal that it's more than just the normal adaptation. And then you might want to get some help uh, in trying to work through some of those issues. And importantly, kids will take their cues from you. So if you show a lot of anxiety, the kids will show a lot of anxiety. So if you're feeling some, you might need to deal with it first.